Hey folks, it's me Roger back with another video. I say that every time, I think about that and I guess I do that to get me going, you know, into sitting here talking to myself. Well, talking to you, but talking to a little green light up here. How y'all doing? Yesterday was my birthday. Happy birthday to me. Also, my wife's birthday. It's pretty cool. Um, I got her this for her birthday. Beatles One Plus, two Blu-ray, CD. Uh, promotional films for all their number one singles and uh, second Blu-ray with alternative versions and stuff. I haven't watched any of this, but I have had bootleg DVDs of some of the stuff for years and um, I, it's cool apparently they did a really nice job on the restoration of the video portion of the stuff and you know put together some interesting collages for some of those early singles and um, you know the ones that the Beatles did after they stopped touring are pretty trippy for the time um, yeah so that'll be fun to check out probably over the holidays it's a good time for that um, and I got some BCLT. How did you know it was my birthday? Actually, uh, some of this came a while ago, but I, I want to acknowledge it. Um, Trish, DJ Trish, um, sent me some more mixes. Totally awesome. Uh, got Rocktober 2015 and Funky Boogie Woogie. Yep, really been enjoying these in the car when Liz hasn't absconded with them. A nice note from Trish. Thank you so much. Really appreciate getting these from you. I've got quite a collection now. And, um, yeah, uh, Richard Riley. I, th I hope I'm getting your name right. I'm sorry. Um, contacted me and uh, said he wanted to send me some things. And um, he runs a label called uh, Piano Mania. And, uh, sent me a nice letter and a bunch of CDs from his label. Um, thank you, Richard. Really thoughtful of you. Uh, he told me that he's, he's started making videos. He claims that at 73 or something, he'd be the oldest person in the VC. I'm not sure that's true, but um, I'll find your channel and leave a link down below. Um, anyway, thank you. So uh, Richard's thing is um, audio engineering, which is why he sent me these, I think. They're piano recordings, um, but focusing on like ragtime. So here we have like hot jazz, pop jazz, and ragtime. Uh, Mortar Gunnar Larson playing piano. Uh, he sent me a nice letter and some handwritten notes about each CD. Um, really nice. Um, so we had stuff by like Jelly Roll Morton and Scott Joplin and um, that kind of thing. So here's High Society, John Gill on piano. Uh, this is from sometime in the 90s, I think, and this is from 2009. Uh, King of the Barrel House, Carl Sonny Leyland. Uh, this is from uh, recently, 2014, is that right? I'm getting old. Uh, Richard Egan, Missouri Romp. Sorry about the glare. I, I haven't opened these or listened to these yet. I'm sorry, but um, I will check them out. Um, he told me here's Prairie Blues Volume 2. He said Volume 1 sold out, but um, the proposed Volume 3 is not going to come out because he says there's no market. Um, and it's... Uh, this is trying to trace like pre-recorded uh, blues music. Um, Each played by a different pianist. I'm interested in checking these out. To be honest, you know, this sort of um, music is not totally my thing, although I have had some fun playing around with ragtime music. Um, but I would never dare to make a recording of it. Um, anyway, thank you, Richard. Really thoughtful. I will definitely check these out. Um, really nice birthday present from from the VC and holy crap folks you guys blew up my phone yesterday I had to explain to some people 
who were like, who, who are all these people? And, you know, Cheers, VC. Thank you so much. I feel the love. I'm going to try to not make this too long video. Um, but I want to show some other birthday presents I got. Um, not final, sorry. Um, my stepmother-in-law gave me this. David Torn, Only Sky. His latest record on ECM. It's CD only, so what are you going to do? Um, yeah, David Torn, great guitar player, man. And his previous record on ECM, Presence, is, is a masterpiece. Um, with a band of Tim Byrne and... Tom Rainey and um, Craig Tabor, new killer record. This is solo electric guitar and way out there, you know, processed electric guitar, you know, through laptops and effects pedals and uh, mostly live, I think. Um, yeah, really, really cool. Thank you, Katie, really. Um, I've been wearing this for a while and just hadn't, hadn't picked it up. And my step-brother-in-law, David, sent me this uh, great, great Olivox SACD, John Dowland's Lacrimae, or Seven Tears, from 1604, performed by Hesperian 20, led by Jordi Saval. Jordi Saval, great Catalan violist. Um, yeah, so Elizabethan era, era music played on, you know, period instruments. Originally came out on the Astri label in 87, and um, this is uh, SACD on Alia Vox. Just gorgeous. Uh, just uh, John Dallin was a lutenist, and um, this is, I think, his only music for um, ensemble. Uh, so it's lute with a viola consort. Um, very melancholy, and yeah, I just like the cover. It's gorgeous and you know pre-classical so it's subtle and sublime in a way that you know it doesn't hit you over the head with emotions but it's beautiful and touching thank you david this is awesome i listened to it like four times in a row all right oh wait here also another uh great birthday present from my mother-in-law uh, great book, uh, Seasons They Change, The Story of Acid and Psychedelic Folk by Jeanette Leach. Nice big thick book. Um, yes, similar, you know, scope to that Electric Eden book, which blew my mind and changed my record collecting habits forever. Um, uh, this, rather than being focused just on the UK, this also uh, deals with what was going on in the US and the cross-pollination and uh, also, uh, a good half of the books devoted to uh, modern uh, artists that were inspired by this stuff, like Devonda Bernhardt and people like that. Yeah, I already started plowing into this. Excellent. I love that stuff. I love books about music and music and records and CDs. And I loved all DVDs, Blu ray. All right. It occurs to me that my last few videos have just been like, you know, what I got at the record show, what I, all that prog stuff I got at Grimey's, you know, and, you know, called like a so month or so has gone by since I've shown just like regular old, you know, stuff. So uh, I, I'm going to show some new vinyl purchases over the last month or so. And um, I'm going to make another video later this week showing, you know, the antiques. All right, so moving on. Records, that's what you're here to see. I'm nine minutes in. I haven't shown a single vinyl record. Most of you shut me off by now, I'm sure. That's okay. I don't care. All right, so yeah, another couple months have gone by, so here's another Robert Pollard record. Here is Guided by Voices, Briefcase 4, the companion to Suitcase 4. Yes, another hundred songs from the mythical suitcase of Robert Pollard. Um, what was there to say? Um, this I think has a track that's not on here, so it's really a hundred and one extra song, one hundred and one barrel scrapings from Robert Pollard. I'm a fan, so I had to get it. 
And what do you know? It's it's awesome. The Pollard is a genius. All right. Nothing but vinyl here on out. More Pollard. Circus Devils, Stomping Grounds. Uh, Circus Devils is his long-running collaboration with Todd Tobias, the T Tobias Brothers, um, where he generally lets his freak flag fly and gets all proggy and experimental. And uh, This is a pretty straightforward rock record. This is excellent. I mean, you know, some, some of you who would be scared away by the Circus Devils, this might be a good entry point. Or not, I don't know. I can't remember if I've shown this before. I'm, or talked about the CD, I can't remember. The vinyl just came out like in the last month or so and I picked it up. The new Wilco, Star Wars, I apologize if I've shown this before. Um, I love Wilco. Uh, I've seen them a bunch of times. Um, they're a live band. Um, I think I have shown this. Never, never, more, never, mind. never mind. I'm glad to have this on vinyl, whatever. Comes with a download of them playing those songs live. Then. That's where it's at. All right, so here's the second new Beach House record. Um, Thank your lucky, lucky stars on Sub Pop. Nice gatefold, heavy duty gatefold. Uh, don't know about that cover. Um, and when I heard that, you know, two weeks after putting out Depression Cherry, they were going to put out another record, um, I was a little bit like, oh, that sounds like a stunt to me. Um, you know, why not just make a double record or um, give us more than a couple weeks? So, anyway, so I kind of I kind of put off getting this, and I did, then I got it, and, I, you know, I like it. It sounds like outtakes from Depression Cherry, really. Um, I like it. it. It's okay. I, you know, I feel a little manipulated, you know, it's like, at least it wasn't expensive. That's what I like about Sub Pop. Their LPs are not pricey and it's very well done. Excellent. Here's another record I'm not too sure about. Um, the New Death Heaven, New Bermuda. They've moved to a major label, well, our major label subsidiary, Anti, for this one. And they've been given a little bit more money, and so, um, you know, one of my criticisms of Sunbather was that the sound was kind of meh. Um, although that's kind of a black metal trademark, is bad sound, although I don't really understand why that would be. Um, but this does not have bad sound at all. In fact, it has a, quite a slick sound uh, with lots of piano and... Uh, there are moments where you might think it's an Elton John record. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I, I'll tell you one thing, you like Sunbather, they do this sort of interlude thing with like, cap, you know, audio verite kind of thing. And, um, those are a little bit tedious on Sunbather. And here, it's like this traffic announcement about trap, you know, uh, road, you know, lane closures on the George Washington Bridge. And it's, it's like, Huh? What? I don't know. I thought Sunday there was a really powerful record. And so I guess I had expectations that couldn't possibly be fulfilled. Um, except sonically, this is this sounds really good. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I gotta listen to it some more. Whatever. All right, the new zombie, long awaited new zombie record, uh, Shape Shift on Relapse. Uh, 245 RPM on, uh, you know, I got to show this because I'm ambivalent about colored vinyl for the most part. Um, but yeah, this is all spot varnished on the cover here. It's really nice. And it's a groovy gatefold. But yeah, this is a gorgeous slab of vinyl I think um, you know, if you're gonna do the colored vinyl you might as well do it like this in fact I thought it really belonged in Tim Guthrie's collection so I sent him a copy this is the special mail order only I think there's 500 copies or something of this 
yeah, zombie. I really dig these guys. Uh, very much in the Goblin kind of Italian horror movie soundtrack kind of thing. So analog synthesizers, but with some kind of pounding drums. It's a little heavier than Goblin. Um, yeah, I dig it. All right. Sorry to go on so long, but yeah, I got a lot of records here to show. Cheers, VC. Thanks for hanging in with me. Uh, this got repressed, so I picked it up. Imogene piece, Atlas Eats Christmas. This is, of course, the Flaming Lips doing some really dark and twisted versions of Christmas music and miscellaneous holiday um, cheer. Uh, yeah, um, my wife and I love love this. This is per this is perfect after after one of those long, hard Christmases, you know, and where you're finally at home and the kids have shut up and you can put this on and put, you have a stiff drink and, you know, feel sorry for yourself. It's that kind of music. All right, this has been Repressed 2, which I'm really excited about. Uh, Raleigh Walker's first album, All Kinds of You, on Tonkin Square from uh, 2014. Not as good as Primrose Green, um, uh, but excellent. You know, I think this guy shows enormous promise. If he can, you know, hang in there, I think, you know, he'll do, he could do really amazing things. And that Primrose, Primrose Green album is a masterpiece. So if he does nothing else, he's done that. Uh, another repress, I guess. I don't know. It showed up at Grimey's. Uh, Cybertron, Sunday Night at the Total Theater. From, uh, it's originally a private press from Australia in 1976. This is a reissue on Dual Planet. Now, all you gotta do is look at that cover and you know exactly what it sounds like. It's, uh, you know, electronic space music. Uh, very much in a Heldon kind of way. I just love those synthesizers. He plays saxophone, so it's not really guitar driven so much as saxophone and electronics. Cool stuff. I really wish I'd picked up their Dual Planets uh, reissue of their studio album. Oh well, I should look for it online. Alright, just a couple more here. Um, Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Blood Butterfly, the uh, actual official vinyl on, uh, God, what label is this all even on? Whatever. Um, yeah, I had the CD for a long time. Uh, hip-hop, yeah. hip um, I don't know what to say about hip-hop. When I listen to hip-hop, and especially a record like this, which is like super powerful, um, I kind of feel like a voyeur, like, this is not, this is not, this music is not made for me. Um, and, and yet it's super compelling, um, disturbing. I guess as a white guy, I start to feel complicit in the oppression that this record agitates against, even though that is not me, but anyway. Uh, yeah, this was just too powerful a record to leave alone. I had to get it on vinyl. It sounds fantastic. Uh, another repress um, that I didn't even know about until recently, and I'm glad I snapped it up because it's my favorite Porcupine Tree record, uh, In Absentia. Originally from what? 1999 or something like that, 2000. Um, yeah, the CD sounds atrocious. Um, lots of brick walling and digital distortion, and I hate it. And uh, the DVD audio is way out of print, and I was always hoping for a vinyl reissue because originals go for huge dollars. And so, yes, um, I've talked about Stephen Wilson before and my love hate with him. Uh, this is my favorite Porcupine Tree record, but I gotta say I don't love every song on this record. But I'm really happy to have it on vinyl because it sounds freaking amazing. 
All right, I'm gonna stop there. 20 minutes. Not bad, right? I mean, come on. In fact, I'd say 20 minutes is my ideal video from you folks um, who make videos because, uh, I don't know. Shorter than that, I feel like, oh, I, I would like to spend more time with them. Um, when it gets longer than like 40 minutes, 50 minutes, over an hour, um, that's a big commitment task for someone. Although I did really enjoy um, Anders and Jonas getting together. That was awesome. I had to watch it in parts, but um, yeah, I love those kinds of videos. All right, enough of my yammering. I'll be back soon with my pre-loved antique vinyl records to show you some cool stuff there. Take care, everybody. I'll see you soon.